In this video, we'll be looking at the definition of improper integrals with an unbounded integrand. So this is our second type of improper integrals. We've already looked at the case where we have um, an integral that's improper because it has limits, say, um, with infinity or negative infinity in them. But now we're going to be looking at examples where I have something like, say, for example, the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over x dx where I would have some sort of a vertical asymptote, um, either in the middle of my interval or at one of my endpoints. So for an improper integral with an unbounded integrand, um, we're going to first look at the cases where maybe we have that infin um, infinite dis discontinuity at the left-hand side or the right-hand side, and then we'll look at what happens if there's a, a discontinuity in the middle of the interval. So for our first case, if we have our function being continuous on the interval from a to b, um, where it's continuous at b but not at a, but as we approach a from the right, our function is going off to infinity or negative infinity. So that means we've got some sort of a vertical asymptote um, as we're approaching a from the right. Then we'll take our integral from a to b and rewrite it as a limit. We're going to replace that problem value here of a with some new variable, let's say c. So I'll have this integral from c to b, and I'll be looking at having c approach a from the right-hand side. So remember, I have this interval here from a to b. a is the problem. I need to be approaching it from inside of the interval, so I'm going to be approaching it from the right. So I'll have my integral here, limit c goes to a from the right of the integral from c to b of f of x dx. So then we would do normal integration here on the integral from c to b, and then we take our limit in order to figure out the value of our improper integral. If we're in the situation where our function is continuous on the interval from um, a to b, continuous at a, and discontinuous at b with an infinite discontinuity at b, so the limit as x goes to b from the left of f of x is equal to infinity or negative infinity, then we're looking at rewriting this again as a limit. Now b is our, our problem value here, so I'm going to replace that with some variable, let's say c. So I'll have this integral from a to c, and I'll be looking at c approaching b from the left. So here's my interval. I have this interval from a to b. I'm approaching um, b here from inside of the interval, so I have to approach it from the left. So I'll have my integral here of f of x dx. So just want to remind ourselves about some terminology. When we're computing these limits in order to figure out the values of our improper integrals, we say that the improper integral converges if that limit exists as a finite number and diverges otherwise. So like we had been doing before, we'll be interested in um, concluding after we evaluate an improper integral, whether that means that the integral is converging or diverging. So for the last situation here, um, we could have a function that's continuous, except at some point in the middle where the function's um, unbounded. So we're thinking about some situation, let's say, for the um, y equals 1 over x function here, if I wanted to look at the integral from negative 1 to 1, of 1 over x dx, then I have that vertical asymptote at x equals 0 in the middle, so I have to figure out how I would um, handle that sort of integral. So the first thing that we would do if there's a, a point of discontinuity in the middle is we would write our integral as a sum of two pieces. So I would write this if the point P is the place where I ha I'm having that, that vert vertical asymptote, that unbounded um, part of my function. I'm going to write this as an integral from A to P of f of x dx plus the integral from p to b of f of x dx. And now I have a problem value here at the upper um, bound, so that's going to be like the case that we saw in, in part b above, and I have an integral where I have that problem value at the lower um, bound, so that'll be like case a above. So I would rewrite each of these as their own limits. So I would have a limit as c goes to p from the left of the integral from a to c of f of x dx, plus I would have here a limit as, and I'm just going to pick a different variable because for this separate integral we'll call it the limit as d goes to p from the right of an integral from d to b of f of x dx. 
Okay. And again, we have some terminology in terms of um, where this integral converge, whether this integral is going to converge or diverge. Um, if we're in a situation where we have to write our improper integral as these two pieces because there's a um, discontinuity in the middle, an infinite type discontinuity in the middle, then we're going to say that the integral, the overall integral here from A to B um, is going to converge if both of those limits, both pieces of the integral, converge. So in order for our integral from a to b of f of x dx to converge, I would need that first limit and that second limit to both converge. So I'd be adding two, two finite numbers together. Um, the integral is going to diverge if at least one of those integrals diverges. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. And anytime you have um, an integral with an um, improper integral where it's it has that um, infinite discontinuity in the middle and you have to write it as these two different pieces, you're going to compute the integral for the first piece. If that first integral diverges, you don't have to go and compute the, the second piece because you know that the, the overall integral will, will have to diverge. If, on the other hand, your, your first integral converges, you'll have to compute that second piece to determine whether it also converges and then your value is equal to the sum of those two pieces. Or if that second integral diverges, that means that your overall integral um, must diverge. So look at the next videos to see several of examples of working with improper integrals with these unbounded integrands.